November 5th, he'll be voting for Vice President Kamala Harris. Former six-term South Carolina Congressman Bob Inglis is the latest conservative to come out against the Republican Party's nominee, recently telling the Charleston City paper that he feels sorry for Trump, though he called him a clear and present danger to the public. Former Congressman Bob Inglis joins us now live. We should note he's also executive director of RepublicN.org, a conservative nonprofit promoting solutions to climate change. Republic N, N as in energy. Sir, thank you so much for being with us. Is your endorsement of Harris more about your approval of the vice president or a rejection of Trump? Well, it starts with the rejection of Donald Trump. You know, I think he's disqualified based on his character, um, but also based on rationality. You know, a lot of what he says just doesn't square with the facts. And so um, I don't know whether that's a processing issue as he ages or whether it's um, something else. But in any event, uh, it's pretty obvious that uh, we're, not, we're not dealing with a totally rational actor. Uh, but we're also dealing with somebody with real flawed character traits. So I, I can imagine what your response might be to a question about his calls for House Speaker Mike Johnson to shut down the federal government over this part in the bill about uh, voting and, and getting uh, law into place that would prevent people that aren't citizens from casting ballots. Yeah, you know, I, I can give this advice. Uh, you know, uh, I was there from, for, for some government shutdowns. They never work for the party that's in power. Um, so that's a sure path to a loss of the how, control of the House, actually. And I do hope, as you were just reporting there, that uh, House Republicans are aware that, gee, many, that's a real problem. I mean, we have Donald Trump out there insisting on a government shutdown because it sort of uh, sells uh, newspapers or something. Uh, yeah, it does that, but it, uh, the blame usually falls on the party that's supposed to be getting those budgets passed. And so uh, it's really bad advice from a guy who seeks publicity really because of his narcissism, I think. I really do feel sorry for Donald Trump. He, he doesn't think of anybody but himself. And um, I think that's, uh, that's his problem. Really needs some help, actually, I think. Congressman, I, I want to play a soundbite for you from a Republican colleague, Scott Jennings, here at CNN, talking about January 6th, 2021. Let's listen. Because, because that happened does not mean I or Katie or any other Republican has to give up on every single value that we've ever had, whether it has to do with taxes or the court or any other policy. You're asking Republicans to turn over the government to absolute radical liberals over one day. Part of your support for Harris, I understand, has to do with a desire to watch the Republican Party move on from the Trump era and move forward. But I'm, I'm curious about how far Trump has remade it. And, and January 6th and the revisionist history, the denialism that's followed, being a glaring example of that, do you think that return to, to the Reagan era is still possible? Well, I think there's uh, there'll be a return to rationality at some point uh, when this idolatry of Trump uh, fades away, um, when we find out that he's not the second coming, he's not really a messiah, um, that uh, then the Republican Party will have a rethink and hopefully will return to a party that is a free enterprise party that uh, believes in smaller governments, and believes in balancing budgets, and that believes in playing a role in, in the world. And so... I think it's coming, and I think that it will come as a result of really moving away from this radicalism. It's not that Kamala Harris is radical. It's that Donald Trump actually suggested in 2022 the suspension of the U.S. Constitution. That's not conservative. The conservative party that I've always been a part of says, no, we really stand for the Constitution. And so when Donald Trump suggested that we suspend the Constitution, Really, that should be a tip-off that something wrong here. And uh, Republicans need to rethink this and move away from really a, a, a bad uh, bad direction we've been going. The true north is toward those free enterprise, small government values. And uh, we can get there if we just think clearly. Uh, Congressman, I do have one question for you about a strategy from the Harris camp. In, in the roughly 60 days since she started leading the ticket, 
she has done three interviews with the press, while Trump has done 14, J.D. Vance has done 60. Polls show that voters are eager to get to know more about her and about her policies. Do you think that strategy of restricting engagement with the press is a winning one? Well, I'd suggest that she go on uh, networks, particularly that she joined Pete Buttigieg in going into places that you wouldn't expect Democrats to be. Um, and so that would make sense because it, uh, she does need to reach out to people who are uncomfortable with Donald Trump. You know, there are a lot of Republicans who are uncomfortable with Donald Trump. Um, you know, and uh, so if, if she can just reach out to those through uh, outlets that will give her that opportunity, I think it could be very productive for the Harris campaign. And it would begin to show that Donald Trump is the extremist here. He's the one that denies facts. He's the one that makes stuff up. Um, she needs to be the rational adult in the room that still has her faculties about her, that isn't going off into some sort of uh, lack of rationality, maybe based on uh, advanced age or something that Donald Trump is dealing with. Uh, but uh, she can be the alternative, uh, the, the rational one that uh, cares about people beside herself. Former Congressman Bob Inglis, we appreciate you coming on and sharing your perspective. Great to be with you. Thanks so much.